Hopefully that by this point in our study of solving equations, you've become quite familiar with the method and procedures for solving. We tend to do any simplification that needs to be done, distribution, combining like terms, gather the variable that we're curious about to one location, and then isolate that one item. Well, in this lesson, we're going to take that and apply it to more general equations and items that involve more variables. So let's begin with our method, but some definitions for that. First definition we're going to look at is literal equation. And a literal equation is simply an equation that contains two or more different variables. So everything we've had so far had x or z or w, but we haven't had more than one. So if I take a look at a, just a general equation, uh, x plus y equals p, this is a literal equation. Right now it is solved for the variable p, but I could for some reason need to solve it for x or solve it for y. When an equation is solved for a variable, it means that variable that it was asked for is isolated. It's the only thing on its side of the equal sign. While we're doing this, rewriting equations and working with literal equations, a lot of application for this will come through the use of formulas. So a formula, by definition, is an applied literal equation that shows the relationship of one variable to others. For instance, the perimeter of a triangle, P, is equal to side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3. So each of these sides has a control over that overall perimeter. Later in this lesson, we will be looking specifically at formulas, plus there will be a lot of application for formulas when we move into a study of geometry. But first, let's take a look at just solving equations or literal equations for a specific variable. To do this, we're going to begin with a set of parallel formulas or parallel equations to work with. We're going to take the equation 4y plus 7 times 2 equals 8. Now in our normal solving procedure we would simplify each side prior to moving on. But let's say we want for some reason to save all simplification till the very end. So how would I go about solving this equation for y? Well do I have any subtraction or addition? Yes, I have the seven, plus, uh, 7 times 2 being added to my variable. So I'm simply going to subtract 7 times 2 from each side of my equation. That leaves me with 4 times y equals 8 minus 7 times 2. Again, we're going to simplify at the end. Now, do I have any division or multiplication? The answer is yes. I have this 4 being multiplied by y. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And that leaves me with y equaling 8 minus 7 times 2, all divided by 4. I have now solved this equation for the variable y. I can now simplify. 7 times 2 is 14. 8 minus 14, all divided by 4 but we have the general equation. So how is that equation any different than taking 4y minus 7x equals 8 and solving this equation for the variable y? Well, the answer is it isn't. I'm still trying to get y by itself, so I look. To my variable y, am I adding or subtracting any items. Yes, I am subtracting 7x, so I'm going to add 7x to each side. When I do that, I have 4y equals 8 plus 7x. Now, do I have any division or multiplication? Yes, I have multiplication, so I'm going to divide both sides by 4 and I come out with y equaling 8 plus 7x all divided by 4. These results are nearly identical. Instead of a 2, I had the x. And in my original equation, I had started with a plus 7, so I end up with a minus, as opposed to starting with a minus and ending with a plus. 
but the method, the way things work, are all the same. So we can choose any variable we want and do what we need to to isolate it from the others. Let's move a little bit of this over and take a look at another equation. Here we have the equation 4m plus 7mp equals 12. And let's say I want to solve this for the variable m. Well, when I have the variable showing up in multiple locations that aren't like terms on one side of an equal sign, you have to apply other rules and principles of mathematics. One of them that at this point in math typically we've always had moving one direction, we're going to have to reverse. And that principle is distribution. If I have a times b plus c, I can distribute that a to a, b plus a, c, simply multiply it by both items. But that equal sign tells me it works both directions. So if I can take an item and share it out, I could also take a common item in multiple locations and gather it away. And that's what I'm going to do here. I have an m showing up in both of these locations. So I'm going to pull that m out of there, leaving me with simply 4 plus 7p equals 12 when you have that m divided away. Now, how do I isolate my variable m? Well, this group in parentheses here is being multiplied by m and we undo multiplication with division. I'm going to simply divide 4 plus 7p from both sides of my equal sign, leaving me with my m isolated and the fraction 12 over 4 plus 7p as my equation. So we can use distribution, we can use other principles of mathematics that we know to do what's necessary in order to isolate these variables. So now let's take a look at how this can apply to some formulas. Our first formula we're going to look at, A equals 1 half BH, hopefully you recognize is the area formula for a triangle. The area of a triangle is 1 half the product of the base and the height. Well, let's say I need to solve this equation for the height, for h. How do I do that? Well, first thing I'm going to do is figure out how to get, how are these other items here attaching themselves to h? And since I don't see any mathematical operations, the answer is they're all being multiplied together. So, how do I get rid of multiplication? The answer is division. First division. How do you divide by one half? Well, mul dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying its reciprocal, so I'm going to start by multiplying both sides by 2. That gives me 2a equals bh. Now, how do I divide by that other variable? Quite simply, I just divide it. So that tells me that 2a divided by b equals h. Now when would you need this? Let's say you have a fixed area and a base and you need to start playing around with what height would make things possible. Or a fixed base and you want to play around with uh, areas to see what height can be permitted. If you isolate a specific variable you can then solve substituting in the other values that you know. Our second equation, this is the surface area of a cylinder. The area equals 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Again, let's solve this for h. Now, how do we go about doing that? Let's begin by looking at how things are ho holding on. Here's my h variable. I have this series of items being multiplied by it, and I have these items being added. Well, according to our solving, subtraction, addition, division, multiplication, exponents, groups, I'm going to get rid of that subtraction or addition first. So, let us subtract 2 pi r squared 
from both sides of my equal sign, leaving me with area minus 2 pi r squared equals 2 pi r h. Now everything else that's on that side of the equal sign with my desired variable h is being multiplied. So in one lump sum, I'm simply going to divide 2 pi r from both sides of my equation using that division property of equality. So h is equal to the fraction a minus 2 pi r squared divided by 2 pi r. So this, given any cylinder, if I know its air surface area, how much material it takes to make it, and I know the radius of the circle that is going to act as the base, I can calculate the height for different items. Now let's take a look at a few other formulas. Area, volume, circumference. These are common formulas that are given, but we do have others. First one we're going to look at is what's called the dirt equation. And it's distance equals rate times time. And if you think of this in terms of travel, if you're in a car that's traveling 60 miles an hour for two hours, the distance traveled, 60 times 2, is 120. And these are all interrelated. Well, what if you know the distance you're going to travel and the rate? How do you calculate the time? How do I solve this for t? So d equals rt. How's the r associating itself with that t? And it's through multiplication. So I'm going to simply divide r on both sides. And I now have t equals d divided by r. So if I know the distance, I know the rate, I can get my time. But what if it's the other? What if I know my distance and I have time as something that I'm worried about? How fast will I have to travel? So let's take a look at that. Let's go with, again, d equals rt. Let's solve it for r this time. That means I'm going to divide t off of each side. And my rate is controlled by distance being divided by time. And if you think of that, rate, such as miles per hour, feet per second, miles and feet are both distances, hours and seconds are both times. So we can isolate that. Our next equation, I equals PRT. This is a finance equation. I, our interest is equal to our principal amounts that we invest times the rate of investment, that would be the percentage rate, like a 6% interest, 12% interest, and t, the time, the number of years that this investment is left to grow and flourish. So how do I isolate this? Let's say I need a certain amount of interest to be gathered and I know how much I have to invest and I know the time in order to get the extra money, what rate of investment do I have to find? How do I get R by itself? Well, we start with I equals PRT and everything that's happening on the right side of this equal sign is multiplication. So whatever variable I want, I'm simply going to divide in order to get it. So I want r by itself. That means I need to divide out p and t, telling me that the interest rate necessary to gain my money that I want is going to be that interest to be gained divided by the principal and the time of investment. So if I have $5,000 to invest and I have three years to gain the money, let's say I need an extra $400, that's my interest, I could calculate the rate using this formula. And I could do similar things for time or principal. I know the rate of investment, I know the time, I know how much I need to gain, 
how much money do I have to put up in order to get my desired results. Our last equation on the far right hand side, f equals 9 fifths c plus 32, is the relationship between Fahrenheit degrees and Celsius degrees when we're talking temperature scales. So if you're in the United if you're used to temperatures in the United States being in Fahrenheit and you travel to a country that uses Celsius, you can use this formula in order to go from that Celsius over into Fahrenheit. But what if it's the other way? What if you have a visiting exchange student who's used to things in Celsius and now everything's given in Fahrenheit? How do we isolate the C in order to work this? So. Let's work through it. To get C by itself, do I see any subtraction or addition? Yes, I have addition, so I subtract 32 from each side of my equation, telling me that F minus 32 equals 9 fifths times C. Now, I have C being multiplied by 9 fifths. In order to get rid of that, I would have to divide it away. But of course, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 ninths. And this tells me that Celsius is equal to 5 ninths times the quantity of Fahrenheit minus 32. So if I know the temperature in Fahrenheit, I subtract 32 and then take roughly half of it, or 5 ninths, in order to find the temperature in Celsius. So rewriting equations, we're going to be doing a lot of through Algebra 1, and working with formulas, we'll build on that so that it can be applied into geometry when we do that study as well. Uh, make sure you have good notes on these methods, and it'll really help you to be able to solve those equations we were learning earlier.